We've got two squirrels up here playing tag on the uh, Douglas fur. So if everybody wants to see it, that was a squirrel call right there. Skagit River, especially down around Rockport, is a very important bird in the United States. Did anybody see the sign coming through? Did anybody see the sign coming through when you come past Rockport right there? We have a refuge right there that in the wintertime, this bird, the American bald eagle, that's a wintering ground. So during the wintering time, the birds come in from Alaska and from Canada to spend their winters <coughs> spend their winters along the Skagit River. So coming up, I actually seen a, a, a juvenile, a juvenile eagle swoop down, take a fish, and swim up, you know, fly up alongside the hill to land. So we do have some real important birds that are along here. And here we have the tide. These are little, probably little, well, no, they're, they would be little, little gray squirrels that we have here that are common to this part of the country. Back in the Midwest, they have big fox squirrels, which are bigger and red squirrels. So, and then we have flying squirrels and black squirrels. Black squirrels are really unique. They've been brought in from Germany and, and, and planted here in the United States. Oh, yes, flying squirrels. Many, many, many. They fly. When they go out, when they stretch their arms out, they have big webbing. They have big webbing. And they actually glide. Listen, they don't. They don't really fly like this. They glide through the air, and the excess skin that they have, the wind catches in there, and they go from tree to tree. They live in the treetops. Flying squirrels, yes, we have. Them. As I told you about, with a lot of your old growth trees, and with the angle of this tree, and if you look back, it's off the trail. But one thing that you can do on this tree, and I'll show you some, some of what it is. When I said the tree was hollow, huh? Look at that. It looks like disappearing. Because we're also looking at the damage of trees, the liability, the hazards that can be formed, both in the forest and in the urban area. It's very important in the urban area with the trees. We as man have a lot of laws where trees have to be so high above the sidewalk, so high above the road, the tree has to be so low between, below the wires or buildings or other obstructions. So in the forest, whether it be a forester or, or, or an arborist, when we're looking at trees, we look at the liability factor and with a lot of people being around here, as I said, on your old growth trees, a lot of those trees are hollow inside. So this gives you an idea and I'll stand up in the tree. Really? Really? <laughs> that goes all the way up in there. <laughs> what purpose in the forest is a, does something like this serve? Anybody have any idea? A den. A den for animals. Runaways. So, an animal can go in here in the winter time. Another thing about being in the forest, if you're ever out in the forest and you're on a hiking trip, somehow you've got lost, you have to spend the night in the forest. This is a good place to go because it protects you from the elements. So it does serve a purpose, but yet we look at it in a different way as far as hazards. So you can take a look in there and take a look. Okay. Take a look in there and take a look. Damn it. Take a look and take a look. I'm going side. 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 Yeah. Oh, 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 o
Everybody gather around. The storm for a big semi circle right here. We got plenty of room. So we'll talk to you a little bit about trees. Now, you learned something when we went through the, the, the trail of the cedars. And one thing I want to talk about now, we're going to plant a tree. And this little tree we have is a member of the same family that we've seen with the, with the big leaf and the uh, vine maple. This is called a green leaf Japanese maple. It's Acer palmata. Now, one of the things about it, we're going, like I talked about, with Amer uh, President Bush's initiative for America the Beautiful, Starting this year, for the next 10 years, here in the United States, we're going to be planting 1 billion trees a year. And as I said, with, with those trees, right now we have about 230 billion trees in the United States. If we have 10 billion more today, we wouldn't have the air pollution problem that we have because of what trees do in taking the carbon out and storing that carbon. So today, this tree becomes yours. We're going to take part in this planting. A few weeks ago, we planted a little hedge maple over here. All these trees that we're planting under the wires right now are still in the beginning of planting the right tree in the right place underneath our power line. These trees only grow to be 25 at the most 30 feet high. And all the rest of the trees, both here in the Skagit and in the inner cities where you're living, a lot of work's going on right now with inventory in those trees to see the health of the tree and any hazards fall. So what we need to do is plant what's out there and what we need to do. So before we do this, we've got an honored guest in our presence here today. And it's Cheryl Chow. She's our council lady from Seattle. And she also, like I said, talking about the, the, the Community Urban Forestry Council for the state for America the Beautiful. Cheryl is the chairman of that. So we're going to let her speak a little bit for you and, and tell you about that. Well, I'll make it short and sweet. I think um, what, what seems to impress the kids most of all is that I was a school principal before at Sharpless and a vice principal at Garfield High School and a vice principal at Whitworth Elementary for those Seattle people and then a principal at Madison. I guess the only thing I want to say is that um, you are the last group of kids to come through here and what I've heard so far is that the first five groups were really great. As I was coming up, the camp director was telling me that this this group not only is going to be great, but it's going to be the best group that they've had. And in case you don't know, this is a pilot program. This is an experiment. And because of kids like you who are participating uh, and learning a lot of different things, we hope that we're going to be able to do this next year for more kids. So I uh, hope you enjoy your stay here. I've heard that this is the toughest counselor already. <laughs> um, and that's good. That's okay. Because if he didn't care, he wouldn't be tough. Uh, that's what they used to say about me, right, Mr. Jackson? <laughs> yeah, I, I used to be a principal until they took corporal punishment out of the schools. <laughs> then it was no more fun, so I went into elected office. This is more fun. So I hope you uh, really enjoy your stay here. Don't be afraid to ask your counselors questions, and we hope that you take an opportunity to think about when you grow up, eventually you will, uh, 
know, some of the some of the different careers that you may not know about that you'll learn about as you go through camp. So thank you for being here. Okay, with this, we'll tell you a little bit about how to plant a tree. With this tree, this is a container type tree, it's a small one. This tree has to be formed by the garden. Down in the inner cities where you're from, those parking strips are usually very compact and hard, so we have to do an awful lot of preparation when we're planting trees. Mixed with a lot of stones. Mixed with a lot of stones, and sometimes we have to bring in soil to help it. And we do have creatures down there in the ground. One of the secrets, one of the best things to know about trees too is, especially when they're in a container or a roof hole, that you never grab a hold of the tree and carry the tree around like this. Because that'll do damage to the bark, which if there's enough damage there, like I said with the girdling, it would kill the tree. So with this, you try to, this one's already done. As you can see in a container, see all the root systems? You don't want to put the tree in the ground like this. You want to take it, rough it up, stimulate these roots. You can turn them a little bit. And as you can see, there's wood chips in there, and that's part of what nursery does to help hold the moisture when they have them in. Where this is here. Okay. As I said, it's your tree, so everybody take a shovel full and put her in there. What takes it? No. Put some dirt in there. Don't be shy now. <laughs> you guys weren't shy on the tour. Get some around that far side. Come on, you guys can go ahead and get it. You guys can go ahead and get it. Good. Girls. Okay, let's have Jenna Lee. Go ahead, Ganya, that's fine. I'm sure that you know. What are you supposed to do? Anybody that wants to take part, go ahead. Hey, guys, get in there. All right. Yeah, you're not going to get killed. Don't knock them on the head. Because they said they're not going out to Seattle. There we go. Next. Now with this little tree, when the gardeners come out and, and install the fertilizer in the ground, they'll also put the tree. I must say, it's been great fun out here for the last four weeks. What about the first two, Ben? Yeah, I'm sure they have to
distance from this square of paper that I'm putting on the corners. So team three, I now need you to come right over in here and sit. And you guys, Thank you. 
you like watching us eat? I love watching you guys eat. Do you know all Jimmy's? Do you know what Jimmy's? All Jimmy's. Original gangs. Me that question. <laughs> Not on camera. <laughs> One rule applies to everyone alike. When you use electricity, use it right. You 
got no reason not to take my advice. Electric. 